My name is John Harrison. I'm an author, editor, and avid reader. From Sumerian cuneiform and Egyptian hieroglyphics to reading on our smartphones and Kindles, humans have been telling, recording, and sharing stories for thousands of years. Our goal with this program is to start great conversations and find out what makes authors tick. Together, we will dive into the creative process and come out on the other side with a story. Join us. Once upon a time, there was a handsome prince who grew up on the Upper East Side. Today's words come from Gilded by Sin. We are fortunate to have her joining us in the studio today. Sin, it's great to have you here. How are you today? Oh, I'm fine. Uh, I'd like to start with some questions about your origins as a writer. What are some of the creative influences on your writing? Well, when I was little, my father used to read us uh, roll doll stories. So I grew up with, you know, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and James and the Giant Peach and you know, all the children's books. And then as I got older, I started reading some of his short stories, which are much darker, <laughs> but they also have a very moral message. And it's essentially people get what they deserved. And so I've, I've always liked that. And I like to bring that in into my writing. And yeah, basically, people get what they deserve. <laughs> now, did, did these stories um, suddenly did a light go off in your head? I want to do this. I mean, how did these stories lead to starting your own writing? Well, when I was little, I mean, I was you know, your typical kid that always would write the little stories, and and uh, I even had a few that I self-published and put in our school library, you know, all of two pages long, but and written in pencil, of course. Um, but then, yet yeah, writing was never really something I did as I got older, um, and as, in fact, for quite a while, I was afraid that I couldn't write. Um, at, at least nothing long. And then, uh, of course, I got a master's degree and you have to write a 100-page you know, thesis and you know, I, I was dreading that one. But I managed to do it and realized, oh wow, I can actually write longer things. And, and the irony is when I was in my courses and the instructors, when we were starting to do the process for, for writing the thesis, they said, yeah, if anybody's got any, any problems with writing, you know, come talk to us and stuff. So I went up to one of my instructors and I was like, I don't know that I'm a really good, you know, writer. And, and, I'm a, and the response was, oh, really? You're one of the best writers in the class. So that was very helpful um, and, you know, really boosted my confidence. So I, I got through the thesis and then one day I just decided... I've got this idea for a story. I'm just going to start writing it. Okay, so that's that's what began it. Yes. If, if, you, if you hadn't had to write the thesis in school, do you think you'd have gone on to write your story, or would it have come anyway somehow? I don't know. Um, I'm sure that the characters would have been speaking to me, but whether I actually wrote it down or not, I, I'm, I'm not sure. However... The reason I wrote down the story was to get these characters who were talking in my head to shut up. What brought these characters into your head? Why, why the Upper East Side? Why this story? Why these characters? What, when well, did they start speaking to you? I mean, do you, do you know what the influence was when that mm -hmm. happened, how that happened? or? Well, it was after I retired from the Navy and just gee, what do I do now? Um, and it, it just sort of started as a fantasy autobiography. Like I just had this idea of what if I were essentially richer than God? And so that, that's how this character just sort of started to form. And, and then it was just the adventures of finding love. Now, I, I will admit I was happily married at the, at the time. I still am. Um, so it wasn't like I was, you know, frustrated dating or anything. It was just a, 
a what if. Yeah, so this fantasy lived on in you and, and you went with it. Yeah. And, uh, well, well, it's, um, now, how long did it take you to write the story itself, or the entire? Well, it, it started as a novella, um, and I wrote that in three months. And then, you know, put it away, and okay, we're, we're done with it. But then the characters, they just kept talking, and they, they just, no, it's not done. This, this, is, this is what happens next. So a few months later, I was like, all right, fine. And then over the next three months, wrote down essentially the sequel novella, and then put them together. And then, I mean, I would say I edited it off and on for the next 10 years. And I mean, once, once you start something like this, you're never really finished, even if you put it away for a while. If that's what you have to do, yeah. that's what you have to do. So you say you, you put it away for a while. I mean, the whole process of the final book, the entire, not the novella, but the, mm -hmm. the entire book, how long did that, did that take? Well, uh, yeah, once like you decided to well, go and finish it and make it a full novel? Um, well, like I said, it was like essentially two, three months chunks, then put it together, probably worked on it for maybe another six months, and then just put it away. You know, let a few people read it. Uh, got some feedback on it, and it was all very positive, but of course, you know, family usually is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then it was just sort of put it away and just went on to, I had other stories coming into my head, so I started writing those down. And so I would say over the next 10 years, I worked on maybe seven manuscripts that are at this point in varying states of Doneness. Guild is, is the only one that I will say is truly complete. Do you have one or two almost complete? I mean, do you see yourself in the next year, two, three, having another one, two, or three full novels mm, finished? No, it, it, writing is sort of, I've sort of put that away for now. Um, you know, maybe something will come down the line that'll just prompt me to pick up a pick up one of the stories. Um, I was recently involved with the Boston Comics Roundtable and pulled out one of my old manuscripts to start working on as a graphic novel, and I did that for about six months, and then it went back in the box. <laughs> yeah, that's a different approach. The graphic novel yeah. world is is very different. And well, what would you like readers to know about your book? Uh, to interest them in your book? Well, what would make them say, I want to read this book? I want to pick this up. I'm curious about well, how the story if you continues. If you want to read a story about a, a gay man who is richer than God, um, but of course grew up in a very conservative household and essentially rebels against that completely um, and essentially is, is just sort of out to prove that he can become even richer than richer than God, um, but not really embracing who he is and trying to make it by being middle class um, and then finding out how that works out for him. I'll give you a hint, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is a contemporary story though. Those, yeah. those issues are, are very contemporary and, um, and that, that would resonate w with people. And um, in your book, does your character find happiness ultimately, or contentment, or well, that would be satisfaction with it away. who okay. he is? Okay, it, oh, well, it's, okay. If it, it's if, ultimately a romance. I mean, I tried not to be, and I kept saying, I don't want to write a romance, and it's ultimately a romance. But yeah. not one of those bodice rippers, no, 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 no. Yes, no, sure, there are, there are degrees of romance. Yeah. And, um, but I, that is a relevant story today, so, yeah. uh, so I think you should publish it and, and, well, and do it. That's I should let you read it and then, then well, see yeah. what you oh, think. I mean, yeah, I'd be glad to. <laughs> okay. So what, what was your your goal when you started this? I mean, you, you started writing this story. Did Was there a goal or was it like you had to do this because this was in your, yeah. in your head? And most authors have that story. Uh, they uh, How often do authors say that, the characters end up driving them, 
rather than them driving the story. The characters end up telling them the direction they mm -hmm. want to go, and and that um, and they end up with the book that said, "This isn't the book that I exactly. started out with, uh, or that I thought I would finish." Exactly. Yeah. Those I had this this idea, and you know, this was my little fantasy, and then the characters essentially took on a life of their own. Yeah, they did. Yeah, that's and what happens. And they just yeah. went. And when I said, okay, this, this is where the book's going to end, and I wrote the ending in there, and no, no, that's, that's not our story. This is our story. Yeah, they tell you. They direct you. Yeah. So what's next? I mean, what, what's next for you? Well, I mean, this one is put to bed, mm -hmm. kind of, you know, you, you can decide how you want to go forward with it, but the story's complete. So what's, what's the next in, in your, your writing quest? Well, I probably won't write uh, per se, but um, I'm a calligrapher. And I'm, okay, that's the other thing I love about writing. I actually love the physical act of writing, which is why I write all my stories longhand. And that's what I, when you said I was going to ask. So obviously yeah. you don't do calligraphy on a computer so no so no. Yeah. so um, um, so I, I, I want to get back into that and, and sort of more the fine art aspect of it but oh yeah speaking of longhand um, yeah th this is where the tangents start and your 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 guests will will do this <laughs> uh, I participated in national novel nano rimo a national and no, novel writing. You know what I'm talking about. National Novel Writing Month, NaNoWriMo. It's in November. Every, every November. Year. Yes, every oh, November. Gee, and, why don't I know that? And the sense. goal is is to write a a minimum of fifty thousand word novel in thirty days. And a number of years ago, well, I, I basically found out about it like the first week in November. So I'm like, well, I haven't started at the beginning of November, so there's no point in writing anything. And, but I participated on the writers' boards and stuff. And then there was this one person who was whining about not being able to write, didn't have the time, and oh, did I mention that I have to make Thanksgiving dinner next week for all these people? And I said, that's it. I'm going to prove this person's a whiner. So the next morning, 10 o'clock in the morning, I started writing, and over the next eight days, I wrote over 50,000 words and completed uh, another story. Did it's not a very good all? story. Right. I, eight days, that's a, that, yeah. that's a record. I, um, and I actually wrote my start and finish times, and I think it came out to 56 and a half hours, 56 and three quarter hours that's that I actually wrote. And I would write, and then I would go walk on the bike path, and then the next part of the story would talk to me, and I'd come home and I'd write, and all longhand, and it was rather painful. But I finished on the Wednesday <laughs> before Thanksgiving just to prove it could be done. Well, um, how many people do you think that start out in that program end up writing their 50,000-word novel? Well, there... There tend to be a lot of people who do succeed and a lot of people who start out and, you know, have all the excuses for why they can't yeah. finish it. And, I mean, some of it is they just don't have the complete idea. They don't have the characters talking to them. Um, others, they, they, they realize it's a lot more than they can chew. And others have Thanksgiving dinner to make. Yeah, to, to tell someone <laughs> to, to write a novel is a lot different than... I have this story that I have to tell. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how, how well that can work, being told, like as a school project or something, mm -hmm. write a novel. In, in today's world of publishing, um, all of the big authors, the James Pattisons and the John Grishams and, and that top of the iceberg, the publishers want one novel a year. They want them coming out on a regular mm -hmm. basis. And... Um, you could do that. Well, <laughs> back with then. Your, you know, <laughs> with, 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 your, with, with your ability to write quickly, um, a little inspiration in that ability, and you could um, be writing for Random House well, one book a year. I, I have to admit my, my muse has left me. For the um, moment. I mean, yeah, muse, it may come back. Muse's return. You know. but, uh, yeah. Do you have any suggestions or advice for aspiring authors? 
I would say if you've got that story in your head and you've got characters talking to you, write it down. Um, I think a, a lot of the hindrance most people run into, because I ran into it, is they don't think they can write or they don't think they can write enough. Um, and I would just say just, just start writing. Um, if it goes someplace, great. If it doesn't, at least you try. Yeah, and then you've learned. You want yeah, to, and, and you've you know learned. That about and, yourself, and you may that, find, yeah. you know, because you, you can go on the websites and people can tell you all the, oh, you have to sit down and, and write for an hour. or, But it, it's, it's much more of a, you have to learn your style. And once you find your style, it'll work for you. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a very uh, difficult task. And once you decide to do it, it's, um, it's really hard. It's, a, it's, it's hard, hard work being an author. I remember at, at our second book launch for our Kim and my book, Dead in Good Company, uh, one of the participants, one of the essayists in the, off, in, the, in the book at that launch asked me perhaps the most interesting question uh, that I've been asked since doing this. And he said, John, if you knew what it was going to take, because now you're at the other end of the process. If you knew what it was going to take when you started this project, would you have done it? And wow, that because we worked on it 17 months. We had a bunch of well-known authors, including Alan Dershowitz and Hank Phillippe Ryan and a Pulitzer Prize winner, Megan Marshall. And as soon as you commit to it, you realize you don't want to embarrass these people. Exactly. I don't want Alan Dershowitz chasing me down the street saying, what the hell did you do with my name? So I don't know. I couldn't answer that question. If I knew how hot it was going to be, every day was gut-wrenching and, oh, are we doing this right? Is this going to happen? So uh, maybe it's better that you don't know yeah. what's coming, that you just dive into it, follow your instincts, and hope for the best because it really is very hard. Writing is very, very difficult. And if you're doing this lonely. just for yourself, you know, that's another whole aspect because I was just doing this for myself. As you know, I had to write this down. I, I think it's, it's very different for somebody who wakes up one day and says, I'm going to be a writer. Uh, right, yeah, and, and um, harder than they, than they think. Yeah. And a lot of those people start out and in, in, in short time they realize, you know, I'm not going to be a writer. Right. You know, writers have to be writers. Uh, yeah. All the authors that I know, they have no choice. They, they have day jobs, uh, but, but they have to write. And, and they're good at it, and, and they have something to show the world, some, a story to tell. Mm -hmm. And, and they, they have to do it, and they love doing it. It's a love business, uh, the book business, I, I have always felt. Yeah, and I, I, would, I would say that it's the people who, who have to write are the better writers and that the people who decide, well, I can write a novel, it's, how hard can it be? And that's when they discover how hard it, it is. And because they don't have that drive, the, the language they use, just their, their general writing in and of itself isn't at the same level. That, yeah. so, I mean, they may be well trained, and I'm not saying that they had a bad education. It's just they don't have the heart. It's like listening to somebody who sings, and you can have somebody who can sing technically beautifully, and then you can have somebody who can sing technically, and, and then yeah. but really puts their heart into it, and you'll you'll yeah. you know which which is really the better singer. Yeah, without passion, yeah, uh, nothing in the arts really. It happens. The only time I know of of an author that that worked in senior moment, the the Mass General surgeon years ago. Oh, I can't remember his name. I hate when that happens. But he read a couple of books and he said, "I can do that," and and he ended up writing a bunch of and, and of, of great books, bestsellers, made into movies. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll remember it as soon as this as is soon over. As, of course. But but he did start out that way, saying, "I can do that." That, how hard can that be? He didn't have a passion for writing, but but he was a he was a great surgeon and driven and and he did that. But for most of us, okay, those, those are flukes. Yeah. There are flukes. Yeah, very rare though. The flukes are rare. But mostly, if, if the passion isn't there, if you if you don't have to do it, you're not going to do it. Yeah, and the so. other issue is is with what is it they say three million new titles coming on every year. 
because of self-publishing. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, that's that, amazing. So, yeah, yeah, you really have to write. Yeah. <laughs> and you and you can't you can't be worried about how how well it's going to sell. Mm -hmm. there, there are people who get their books on Amazon and say, "Geez, it's been on Amazon a month and I haven't sold anything." That's yeah. Who who knows well, you your story? Do your who knows? Yeah, it's um, and, and that can't be a principal thing. It, it, and, and you learn that quickly. And unfortunately, um, because of the, the way the market is, that you write your book, and then you spend what you would otherwise write your next book marketing your first book. Yeah, yeah. But that's okay, because yeah. cause you like it, and, and you'll get good feedback along the mm -hmm. way, and there'll be people who like it, and people have suggestions, and, um, and, and it matters yeah. to, to authors. That's, that's what matters. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's not easy. Yeah, there are very few James Pattisons and John Grishams end up. Um, yeah, and they don't that, even write their own books in anymore. That world. Yeah, now they have fr <laughs> they're franchised like car dealerships. Uh, it's but but it's an amazing thing. But but that's the the world we're in today. Mm -hmm. But still, it's a worthwhile thing. And if you get a book to happen, you publish a book. It's a great thing to hold yes. the book in your hand that you've you've done because you know all the work that's gone into it. You know how much time it's taken. And it's coherent, and you know, and, and it matters. It's, it's and the great. other thing you so. can do is you can just print it all out, you know, on um, eight and a half by five and a half, and get it comb bound, and you're holding your book. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it's, <laughs> a, it's a great feeling. It it keeps you doing it, mm -hmm. and um, which was what what we've found a anyway. So, so this is yeah. So, um, I hope in in as time goes by, that you'll have other finished books. Uh, any of these seven that you mentioned, manuscripts, or however many that, that you'll pick a couple of them out and say, oh, this is worthy of finishing, and this one's worthy of finishing. And sometimes when you put something away for a while and then come back to it, uh, you, you find, oh, wow, there's this something to this. I mean, that happens with playwrights all the time. Great Broadway uh, playwrights wrote shows long ago that they put in a draw because they just didn't resonate. Right. They become big successes. And then they take out that old chestnut and rework it a little, and then that becomes one of their, their best work. So, Yeah, because after you, you've, you've completed something, and then you can go back to, to that, and you can see essentially what, what was wrong with it, why it didn't work. And then now you now yeah. you've got some yeah which you've learned some way to from the it. other things you've done so yeah. so that's why putting uh, it's good that you put them away for revision at some mm -hmm. later time because you, you never know when that that will be the thing that inspires you so and then most authors will tell you that nothing is ever finished that's right that's right not in that world yeah, yeah. absolutely there are so many authors that that I've been involved with and they've finished a story, it's been published and some of them said, geez, if I had to do over again, I'd change this. I yep. would have, the ending would be a little different or yep. I would have added this. Or, but you can't, there has to be a time when you say, yeah. this, this is it, this is how I'm ending it. So, so this, has been, this has been a great experience, Sin, uh, learning about your, your, your writing quest. Uh, thanks so much for joining us and speaking about your book. Thank you for having And me. writing experiences and, uh, and thank you viewers for joining us to find out about Sin and her, her gilded um, attempt to write fiction. It's been uh, inspiring. And, um, and I'm John Harrison, and this is Conversations with Great Authors, and I hope to see you next time. We have a full slate of authors that we plan on bringing in to speak to you about their writing life. Thank you, Sin.